true, I'm just a believer in, in God. The best thought to use, or the one that transcends anything else, is not the scientific thought. Because from the argument is, it's like, no one can see my brain. My brain cannot be smelt, touched, uh, etc. So from the rational, from the scientific point of view, people could say, I don't have no brain at the moment. So it's quite humorous. But the situation is, the scientific method is finite in itself. So therefore it cannot be applied to something that's intangible. Only rational thought can do that. That changed when my friends directed me to Islam and said, actually, Islam does provide you with the proof. And I was a bit baffled. I was like, no, there's no such thing, yeah? Because if there was a proof, then everybody would be that religion. Islam has a proof because every human being needs a proof to believe in something. You can't just say something's true without proving it. You know, you can't say, oh, Christianity is true, um, Hinduism's true, Judaism's true, without showing people why. So fine, now we have a creator. We understand this. There's a knocking on the door. Bang, bang. Because I used to, I even went to the lengths of phoning a temple and saying, why is Hinduism true? You know, because I was so confused. And they, they didn't give me any solid answers. None of the other faiths could show me apart from uh, Islam. I cannot assume what is behind the door. Speculation cannot work. Itself, the thing behind the door, must tell us who or what it is. So here we go to find out the expression of the Creator. Where is it? What is it? It's not that, uh, you know, I thought praying every day, five times a day to your God is amazing, is the best thing. That's what attracts me. So I go to the things that were the current status quo, if you like, on what the expression is. The Bible, uh, the Buddhist scripts, etc. So I did quite a bit of an analysis on them. And I said to myself, fine, oh, Buddhism is amazing, it's so nice, etc. But then I came to another thought. Is it the fruits? What does the fruits mean? So I was lucky enough to read some books on social constructionism. Obviously, once I entered the folds of Islam, I saw the beauty of Islam. I saw the justice of Islam. Like the past, when I had friends, I didn't know the meaning of the word friends, and nor did they. Now, what does social constructionism mean? It means, basically, that all our behaviours and our thoughts and our psychological disposition is dictated by the power structure and the influentials in society. So MTV wouldn't show what they're showing now 20 years ago, for example, or 10 years ago. Islam tells you the most simple thing, what is friendship, yeah? How you do things for people, yeah? Sincerely, not for your own benefit, yeah? Not even because you want to make them happy and then they, they in return they're going to do something for you. So I said to myself, fine, I cannot judge things by the fruits because my psychological disposition can change, but truth doesn't change. So I said, forget the fruits. Let's see the basis. Is this from the Creator in itself? I came to the Quran. When I saw Islam, I saw the truth. It was the only expression that lacked contradiction, that had no disparity, <clears throat> that had solutions for mankind, that had this a miraculous nature, which a lot of Muslims call the linguistic miracle in terms of there's 16 styles of Arabic literature in terms of poetry and prose and the Quran cannot fit into those 16 styles it's a unique style in itself and no other poetry or prose pre-Islam or post-Islam fits into that structure when I saw the truth I could reject the truth or accept it and that's so amazing I mean we have the grammar the letters and the structure of Arabic but we can't put it together in order to create even three lines of the Quran which to me is it's blew my mind away and I was so amazed whether it, there were parts of Islam that attracted me or I didn't like for example waking up every single day of my life till, the, till when I die before sunrise that does not attract me to Islam yet and if someone said that to me I'd be thinking nah man do you know what I mean before I became a Muslim and not more what we saw what I saw with the Quran is that it agreed with reality, with the correct sensation of reality. Um, for example, when we come to science, uh, there's a lot of scientific uh, ayahs, verses in the Quran that I agree with current reality, whereas we just found this 50 years ago, but the Quran was expressed 1500 years ago. I accepted it because it's the truth, but once you accept it and you see the true Islam, you think this is amazing because it's from God. 
I have not given up cannabis, I haven't given up alcohol, I haven't, you know, stopped fighting and stopped uh, socializing with women and wake up every... I haven't, I don't do all of these things because I'm believing in something which might not be true. Yeah, I do all of these things and I will do them till I die because I know 100% without doubt it is not a theory, it is a fact that Islam is the truth and it can be proven. So from that, I said I have to be a Muslim now. There's no choice. It's definite. Whether my psychology agrees with it or not, my mind says you have to be a Muslim. Your psychology could follow. Don't think about the news, don't think about propaganda, don't think about politics, don't think about consequences. Yeah, of accepting Islam, think about what is truth and what is falsehood. Many converts feel that it is this secular lifestyle that creates misery in Western societies and more often than not, this lifestyle drives people to perpetrate inhumane crimes that have plagued the West. The ills of this society are numerous in nature and can range from rape, murder, paedophilia and suicide to pornography, gambling, robbery and theft. For example, recent UK Home Office statistics suggest that 80,000 women are involved in prostitution. Between 1989 and 1995, some 4,000 children were cautioned for offences related to prostitution. Organisations that help the survivors of childhood sexual abuse estimate that this is very common in the United Kingdom. If we widen the scope to the treatment of women and children by society, we see that problems are in fact widespread and not sporadic and isolated. In any given day in the United Kingdom, 7,000 women and children seek refuge in sheltering houses to avoid domestic violence. Last year, there were 104,050 domestic violent incidents in London alone. One in 20 women has been raped in the United Kingdom. According to the Home Office, over the last six years, there has been an increase of 82% in the rate of rape. The pornographic industry in the US is worth an incredible $8 billion per year. In the United Kingdom, an estimated figure of £5 million is generated from the sale of pornographic magazines alone. I was quite a feminist, I'd say. I was went to a girls' school, and um, there's very big feminist emotions that were going around there. Everybody got invitations to go to a birthday party. All the Asian girls, they never used to could go. And I just thought, oh, that's because they follow something different from us. And, and um, I suppose that continued, you know, for the media, like seeing the way that like, women are treated. They have to cover, they have to walk behind their husbands and things like that. Their fathers are making them do this, and uh, and then the headscarf was scary, but the niqab was I just could not understand why you'd want to cover your face like that, and you know these two eyes, you and it just looked so frightening to somebody who was bothered about their looks and you know their hair and their you know their clothes, and then seeing some you know black <laughs> ghost walking by, you sort of think. Why would they want to do that? It's so hot, you know, in the summertime. Looking into Islam, the first thing I did was I looked for the about Muslim women in Islam because I thought, oh, that's that's a weak point. There must be something wrong with this with this religion. I used to read about them being beaten up and whatever. And also, when I used to see them in the street, all dressed up and covered, which is quite ironic because that's what I'm doing now. But um, I used to see them all dressed up in black. <laughs> thinking, oh my God, their husbands must have oppressed them. I find it's, it's very sad to hear that the majority of like the propaganda is directed against the Muslim woman, in particular the Muslim woman's dress.